Hey, Coach Justin from Ultimate Baseball Training, and in today's video, we're gonna go over three common hitting mistakes that I've been seeing a lot of younger baseball players make. I want you to avoid these at all costs, so let's just jump straight into the video. This first one I've been seeing more and more recently with a lot of younger hitters, and that is not allowing your back leg to come forward at all during your swing, all right? So if I can demonstrate kind of sort of what that looks like in slow motion, basically imagine my back leg being stuck in concrete, and that's basically what I see when players send me in their swings or something like that. I see them going to their load and their stride, and maybe everything looks good and their front heel drops, but when they swing, they kind of allow their, their arms to come through like this, but they just kind of keep their back leg back here like it's again stuck in concrete and so obviously if you don't get your back leg your back hip if you don't get all of your momentum all your energy driving into the baseball you're not going to have as much bat speed and as much power as you can have all right so you need to be careful with this um, i don't think that actively you should think about you know i'm not telling you to bring your leg through or anything like that but if you are if your leg is literally like it's kind of stuck in concrete as you swing don't be afraid to have this knee almost come forward a little bit like this your knees are gonna pinch together a little bit at the point of contact right you're actually going to come up on this toe a little bit like this you see a lot of players drag this toe a little bit so that's perfectly okay but it's perfectly all right if your back leg comes towards the pitcher just a little bit don't shy away from that and the last thing on mistake number one there's an important point that i want to make and again I'm not talking about you thinking about, okay, I need to somehow artificially move my back leg towards the pitcher. Your back leg, the reason why it comes forward, the reason why your weight actually transfers to the inside of your back foot and then you actually come up on that toe and maybe possibly drag that back foot a little bit, the reason why is because you're explosively rotating in your swing. So we go into our load and our stride, get to our launch position, right? When that front heel drops, that's kind of when when we begin that rotational process. So we begin rotating and as my front heel drops, my back heel is actually gonna come off the ground. They work in sequence, you see that? And then I go into my swing and I rapidly rotate my hips, right? And this should all happen kind of naturally without you needing to think about artificially moving anything. But when that front heel drops, everything rotates and you're gonna feel how this back foot kind of wants to come forward, kind of wants to come off the ground because you're exploding everything that you possibly have onto the baseball. So I wanted to make that important point. All right, the next mistake that I see is finishing with one hand, but doing it way, way too soon. All right, so I wanna get something clear. I don't really care if you finish. When I'm talking about finishing, I'm talking about after you make contact with the ball and you get to extension. I don't care if you finish with two hands or you let off the bat with one hand. Traditionally, you would hold on to that with you know, your, your lower hand. So for a right-handed hitter, my left hand, traditionally I would hold on to that bat with that hand and then let off with my right hand, right? Just because my bat is swinging in this direction. I don't mind if you release the bat and, and finish with one hand, but a common trend that I've been seeing with some hitters is they literally let one hand off the bat like when their bat is right here, right? And so then they finish their swing one-handed like this. Or I even saw a player take his uh, left hand, a right-handed hitter take his left hand off and finish the swing with his right hand. And obviously that just looks awkward, but that's not gonna be your most powerful, most productive swing. What we really wanna focus on is making contact with the ball and then not pulling off right here. We wanna continue to gain ground with this top hand here, continue to gain ground towards the pitcher and work until we get to an extension position where basically the end of my bat, let's say I hit this ball right back up the middle, it's a middle pitch and I hit it right back up the middle, I wanna basically point to where that baseball is going. On an inside pitch, all right, boom, I wanna point to where that ball is going and that is when our arms get kinda fully extended in this good power V position here. Um, but for younger players, if you're really struggling, if you film yourself and you notice immediately after contact, you let go with one hand, I would work on you know, finishing two hands until you get the hang of at least letting the bat go way up here like this. That's one more important point in regards to this mistake. Make sure you finish high. You should always finish your swing high like 
this. Never, you know, mid back like this or never down here because that means you're having kind of a, a chopping motion in your swing. All right, the third and final common mistake that I see all the time is players not keeping their elbows the same distance apart throughout their whole swing. Now, this is something that's very rarely talked about. In fact, it's hardly ever talked about, but this is something that you'll notice with every single successful major league hitter out there. If you watch their swing in slow motion, all right, their elbows stay the exact same distance apart, the same angles until the point of contact. And then obviously after that, it changes, all right? But what I see, all right, let me show you what I'm talking about, um, keeping your elbows the same distance apart. What you wanna do is if this is my starting position here, all right, this is my stance. Notice the angles between my elbows, all right? Now your angle could be more like this, your angle could be more like this, right? But notice the angle. Now when I go into my load and my stride and get into my launch position, my elbows haven't changed that angle. And then when I start my swing, they still have not changed that angle. And they still have not changed that angle even until I get to the point of contact, they haven't changed that angle, that angle is still the same. The only time they change is after I make contact there, then as I continue to gain ground with this top hand, then like we talked about, then you get to that extension position there, all right? So after contact, they're not gonna stay the same anymore. But if you really wanna be a consistent hitter, this is something that you should really try to focus on in practice, keeping your elbows the same distance apart. Um, and, and this is the mistake that I see a lot of younger players make when I, when I talk about not keeping your elbows the same distance apart, is I see them, let's say everything looks good until here, and then boom, you talk about getting a little bit of bat drag going on where this elbow kind of wins the race between the knob. Well, did my elbows stay the same distance apart? No, I started like this, and then at this point here, I lost my elbows. And then the barrel drops, and obviously that's no good, right? But the big thing there that caused the barrel to drop, always think about what causes it, is that elbow went like this, and my elbows were not the same distance apart. Or the same thing can be said kind of the, other, the opposite way, is if my back elbow looks good, but with this front elbow, it goes from being flexed to some players want to get straight at the point of contact. Obviously, this is not the way that you swing, right? So we have to keep our elbows the same distance apart throughout our entire swing. I promise you that's really going to help with your consistency. All right, so now that you know all three of these mistakes and now that you've corrected them, now it's time to boost your bat speed so that you can hit more doubles, hit more home runs, right? Spray balls all over the field. So I want you to grab my free bat speed boosters workout before you go. It's 100% free. All you have to do to grab it is just click on the link in the first comment below. I'll leave that link, I'll pin that comment so it's super easy for you to find. Just click on that, that'll take you to a page where you can get the details for how to grab your free bat speed boosters workout, okay? So go ahead, do that right now. If you enjoyed this video, if you found it helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button for me. If you have ideas for future videos, get in the comment section and let me know. And if you're not already, be sure to subscribe to our channel, turn your notifications on. We're coming out with brand new videos every single week. They're gonna get you better. I don't want you to miss them. So hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching today's video and I'll see you next time. Yeah.